In the winter of 1971, in the snowy woods near Kiminki, Finland, two women had a mind-boggling encounter with a being of unknown origin, and their story may have been forgotten if the same entity had not been seen just days later by two other witnesses. Stranger still, one of these witnesses got a hold of the strange being, and the burn left on his body was still visible two months later. Hello everybody and welcome to my new series called Alien Anthropology, where I share bite-sized stories of any and all things alien. From unusual sightings to bizarre abductions, I am going to step-by-step, little-by-little, convince you that we are not alone. And many of the stories I will be sharing come from the most obscure annals of alien history, so I can guarantee you may not have heard about many of them, such as the story of the Canula humanoid. But before I get into the story, make sure to like, subscribe, or comment if you're enjoying this channel. On February 2nd, 1971, Mrs. K and Mrs. M were driving along a road from Kusamo to Kiminki when they noticed a strange bright light pacing the car on the driver's side. One of the women said initially that her ears plugged up as the light passed overhead, but other than that, she didn't think too much of it. That is until just a few moments later when the pair saw some kind of helmeted humanoid thing pass across the road. It was about three feet tall and was wearing some kind of suit that was olive green in color, and it crossed the road in a series of small jumps. The being did this in what appeared to be slow motion, or how one would walk on the moon. When the creature reached the other side of the road, it seemed to disappear into thin air. And while the experience only lasted a few seconds, the two women were understandably bewildered, terrified even, and the driver hit the gas and they sped off. And perhaps the two women could have or would have easily forgotten it altogether. Perhaps they could have easily explained it away somehow. But the thing was, two lumberjacks would come forward saying they witnessed the same thing just three days later. Although their experience was much more up close and personal. Lumberjacks Peter Alaranta and Johanny Sneck were working in the village of Kangaskila in Kanula, But around 3 p.m. they decided to call it a day as it was getting too dark to work. It's Finland in the winter after all, and daylight is limited. Alaranta noticed a metallic object just above the tree line that he said looked like two saucers placed on top of each other. And he watched in amazement as the craft, which he said was about 15 feet long, started slowly descending towards the forest floor. And as it started to land, four six-foot-long landing legs protruded from the craft, and a circular portal opened from beneath. The two men were about 50 feet away, but Sneck still seemed oblivious to the whole ordeal and was looking in the other direction. Alaranta was too paralyzed with shock to say a word to Sneck, and so he just watched as the strange helmeted being floated down from the saucer-shaped ship. Alaranta said it reminded him of a scuba diver's suit and that it looked, quote, like an astronaut skipping on the moon. Like Mrs. M and Mrs. K claimed, the suit's color was olive green, and whoever or whatever was wearing it was about three feet tall. And here's where things get a little sketchy. The bizarre being then turned and started to approach Alaranta and Sneck, and when Alaranta realized this, he turned on his chainsaw. Now, Sneck was paying attention, and Sneck saw the same craft and the same being. Although, it is awfully strange that Sneck did not hear or sense anything up until this point. Sneck was struck with the same kind of astonished paralysis Alaranta was at first, but after the initial shock wore off, Alaranta started running towards the creature, chainsaw roaring. However, at this, the strange being turned around and started swiftly floating back to its ship. Alaranta dove towards the creature and grabbed it by the boot, but immediately let go when he was struck by a sharp, searing pain in his hand. The two watched helplessly as the flying saucer, or whatever you want to call it, shot into the night sky and they said it was completely out of sight in a matter of 15 seconds. And as wild as this tale may seem, allegedly the burn on his arm was still visible two months after the event. Along with Alaranta's burn, both men experienced debilitating fatigue and soreness for days after the event. Some say this was nothing more than a silly hoax perpetuated by a local radio host, while others are convinced it was a genuine encounter. Either way, two aspects of this case stood out to me in particular. Number one, there are a ton of cases where people report seeing small humanoid figures in what they describe as diving suits. Check out my most recent full-length episode if you're interested in more stories like that. For example, in Corrible, France in 1954, 
a man by the name of Marius de Wilde witnessed two helmeted humanoids along some railroad tracks one night. They were less than four feet tall and were accompanied by a large ship that sped off into the night sky at fantastic speed. As we'll see, the small humanoids wearing various types of helmets were perhaps more common among the entities reported than the small greys that have kind of become the, mo- the mascot of ufology. Again in 1954, between Vanoy and Sinan, France, Yves David encountered a man in some kind of helmeted outfit that looked like a diving suit. The being was very small in stature and spoke in a voice that was, quote, inhuman and incomprehensible. And, like the Canula case, Eve could not move during the encounter. Secondly, the physical effects suffered by Alaranta and Sneck mimic what so many other experience. The man from Quarrelbo, France, experienced temporary paralysis after encountering the small humanoids, and others report severe fatigue following similar encounters. In the initial hours after the encounter, the experiencers may not even be able to move parts of their body, especially if they experienced any kind of paralysis during the encounter. And we are going to get into so many other stories like this one, so stay tuned because we have hundreds, potentially thousands of cases to talk about. And as much as that sounds like an exaggeration, I can assure you it weirdly isn't. But what do you guys think of the Canula humanoid? Is it a hoax, some kind of collective hallucination, just a fun story a Finnish radio host cooked up, or could it have been someone from another world, or perhaps another time, another planet, another dimension? Any and all theories are welcome here. And if you'd like to hear more strange stories from alien abductions to hauntings and other mysterious phenomena, be sure to check out my podcast Paranormal Community College on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, and YouTube for full-length episodes which upload every Tuesday. This week's episode was about hairy humanoids and helmeted beings, so if you'd like to hear more stories like the Canula Humanoid, be sure to check it out. Thank you guys so much for listening, and see you next week. 